Yeah. Right, let me call the meeting of the City Council to order and state that the notice for this meeting was duly posted. There is a quorum of City Councilmen. Everyone is present. If you will stand, our Pledge of Allegiance and presentation of our colors will be done by our Missouri City Fire Department. Thank you. you. May be seated. with children diagnosed with autism spectrum disorders. Missouri City is proud to join in this mission and commend them for their unwavering commitment and encouragement to those in the autism community to never give up in their search to help their loved ones reach their full potential. And whereas Autism Awareness Month raises public awareness about autism and its effects and orders, hope to all who deal with the hardships of this disorder by, you not on, by uniting not only the autism community, but all of Fort Bend County to address this urgent global health crisis. Together we will solve this puzzle. Now therefore, I, Alan Owen, on behalf of the City Council and all the citizens of Missouri City do hereby proclaim the month of April tw 2013 to be Autism Awareness Month in the City of Missouri City, Texas. And I know that on April the 21st, uh, there is uh, an event in, at, uh, in Sugar Land at Constellation Field called Strike Out Autism. Mm -hmm. It's at noon, and that's a Sunday, is it? Or is it Saturday? Sunday, Which is game Sunday time. game time, and uh, we're all going to be a participant of that, but uh, you may want to say a little more about it. I just want to say thank you to Mayor Owen and the community for recognizing and supporting our mission and our efforts. Um, since the brochures were handed out and passed it to the council members, and as he stated, the statistics have changed from 1 in 88 to 1 in 50 school-age children now diagnosed. So autism is an epidemic, and we need the support of the entire community to help these families and help them through this lifelong journey. We invite you out on April 21st, opening weekend with the Sugarland Skeeters to strike out autism. It's a family fun day, first annual event. We hope you'll come out and join us. Good, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I know all this press is not here just for this great city council meeting, but there was another reason. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, if I could have the family of Samantha White come forward, please, um, along with uh, uh, Sonia Carlson from Greater Harris County 911. Uh, come on up here. Christina, our telecommunications operator, if you'll come up here, please. And finally, Lieutenant Brower, if you bring your crew up here, please. Well, Mayor, Council, I think we will all agree what makes a great community are those people that live in that community. And we're here tonight to recognize one of those very bright future person of our community. Let me give you a little bit of a background on this history. On January 25th of this year, at around 3.30 in the afternoon, Missouri City Fire Department was dispatched to a call in Missouri City for a quote unquote grandmother stuck in a tree. <laughs> Upon arrival, Lieutenant Brower and his crew found that the ladder had failed and the grandmother was stuck in the tree. <laughs> now being stuck in the tree and hanging on with both hands made it very difficult for her to call. But luckily, Samantha White, her four-year-old granddaughter, was there with her and was able to make the 911 call Five, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> five. She was four at the time. She's had a birthday. Okay, so she's five now. Five-year-old Samantha White made the 911 call, and she was very calm. She was able to give a lot of great information to the dispatcher, which was delayed, to the fact is that we knew that Miss Brown was not injured while she was in the tree, and because of her quick, calm actions, we were able to bring the incident to a close without any injury or any further um, incident to Mrs. Brown. So, Samantha, we'd like to present with you. First thing we want to do is present you with a certificate for award of exemplary action for your actions on that day. Woo. <laughs> Your great work, a little backpack and a little teddy bear for you. So, Samantha, one other thing, one other thing, for you, such a great job on that day, how about if Lieutenant Brower and his crew take you outside and give you a quick ride in the fire truck? Would you like that? All right. So, thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to let uh, Sonia Clausen from Greatest Harris County 91 make a presentation also. <laughs> Samantha, I have one more little thing for you. My name is Sonia Clausen, and I'm with Greater Harris County 911. And I wanted to let you know that today is the first day of National 911 Education Month for the entire month of April. And I couldn't think of a better way to promote National Education Month than to recognize you as someone who does know how to call 911 and what to do. So we have a special little medal. <laughs> Thank y'all. Good job, Samantha. Mm -hmm. We need to hear Grandma's story. Yeah. Yeah, why was she in the tree? Yeah. 
Are you sure that's yours? No. You sure? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I got to present us the next presentation also. Um, I'd like to invite uh, Lieutenant Sam Scott and his crew to come up here, please, Chief Braswell. We in Missouri City Fire Department created a, a, an award, it's an internal award for comm commending our personnel and crews for exemplary actions or, or innovation or, or quote unquote thinking outside the box. And our first, and first award that we've ever, first ever Golden Axe Award that we are presenting, we are presenting to Sea uh, Shift Station 1 um, for their actions a couple weeks ago at a call at La Quinta. Um, it, let's start back a few months ago though. Um, Lieutenant Scott and Justin Fox came to us and said, came to Chief Day and said, we'd like to buy these little carbon monoxide detectors to carry on our medical bags or on our persons. Um, $150 investment. Little did we know that that $150 investment were turned out to be a big save. Um, recently we responded, the crew responded to a unconscious person at the La Quinta, treated the patient, little detector started going off. Well, the first thing I thought was the ambulance was uh, actually putting the carbon monoxide because it was parked at the front door, so it was picking up the carbon monoxide from the ambulance. But after the ambulance left, they realized that the exhaust pipe was pointing the other direction. So the crew, not willing to be satisfied, got the, the bigger gas detector monitor out and actually found that there was a carbon monoxide leak inside the pool area from some malfunctioning equipment. There's no doubt that these gentlemen's resolve of not just to take, to dismiss this alarm saved many lives that evening. So on the behalf of Chief Day and myself, Lieutenant Scott, Justin Fox, John Wallace, you were riding up that day, and Chris Coleman, we'd like to present to y'all the first ever Missouri City Fire and Rescue Golden Axe Award for your great actions on that day. So good job, guys, proud of y'all. This is Officer Dasty, and today is his last official public appearance as an officer with the Missouri City Police Department. Uh, to give you a little background on Dasty, who, by the way, is about to turn eight years of age, he was born in Czechoslovakia, and although people have said that he speaks Czech, he actually only understands Czech. Uh, he was brought to the U.S. by Worldwide Canine, and that's who we acquired him from. He began his career with Missouri City in 2007, so uh, he's uh, reaching the term of a service dog's, you know, life to do well. But he has done well since he's been here. He is directly responsible for the seizure of more than 107 pounds of marijuana, wow. 346 ounces of cocaine, over 700 illegal pills, and more than $35,000 in U.S. currency. Uh, he's assisted not only uh, the officers here in Missouri City, but also the cities of Sugarland Police Department, Stafford Police Department, Richmond Police Department, Arcola Police Department, the Harris County Precinct 7 Constable's Office, 
the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Department, Texas Department of Public Safety, the Drug Enforcement Administration, and also the East Fort Bend County Special Crimes Unit. <coughs> After he leaves tonight, he'll partner up with his, uh, his new partner, uh, who is uh, Pete standing up here, four years old, and Peyton's back there on mom's lap. So uh, we're gonna miss him, and uh, I think he deserves a round of applause for doing a great job here in Missouri City. Say, and, I, and I know that Chief Berenson was here and He's some of these guys right. in the back room. Had that uh, been shallow, we wouldn't have had that. We wouldn't have come in here. <laughs> yeah. Shallow was, I guess, let's see, Dasty is our fourth police dog. We had shallow, we had <laughs> flash. <laughs> oh, Zoom. Well, that's five. So our next one will be number six. Hundred and six pounds right there. Hundred and six. Show me child. I got a little bit of that. Oh, it's like this one. Nothing, some private. That would be nice, right? All right. Uh, item four, public comments. I did not have anyone sign up to make public comments, so item five were staff reports, and item 5A is a presentation of the Missouri City Police Department 2012 year in review. Thank you, Mayor, Council, uh, members of city management. Let's get started. There you go. Uh, this is our 2012 year in review. Uh, kind of hard to follow up after Samantha's heroics. So I'll, uh, I'll try to get through this and make this as productive as all the uh, ceremonies we had before. Uh, based upon questions that we've gotten from citizens this year, we added a demographic component to the, uh, to the front of our presentation to show how Missouri City's uh, demographics within the department have uh, slightly changed since 2009. Um, not to belabor the point on this particular slide, but you'll notice that uh, the increased diversity amongst officers within Missouri City. And on slides to that, uh, or after this, you'll see that not only the demographic profile of officers uh, of all ranks, but the demographic profile of supervisors in particular has, uh, has taken a change and become more diverse. I think that's a, uh, a product of us going to a different testing system and bringing in outside assessors to uh, evaluate people in the process of obtaining promotions within the city of Missouri City Police Department. As you see in the uh, fourth slide, it says the future of MCP will come from all walks of life, and that's true. Uh, we have uh, a very diverse department, and we are aiming to make it as diverse as this great city. Uh, statistically, uh, I always go over the uh, methods for which we calculate or and compile the, the stats that we give you every year. Um, we use the hierarchy method, and that's based out of our UCR format. Uniform crime reporting is what we use. It counts the most serious offenses in any particular incident. And as you know, most of the agencies in the uh, Houston metropolitan area, heck, within the country themselves, use UCR reporting. And uh, UCR offers an apples-to-apples -to -apples comparison for us 
to uh, measure ourselves against other agencies and to, in particular, look at what's trending crime-wise in other areas and direct ourselves in deployment ac accordingly. Our part one offenses are our most serious offenses, as you see. We go over the top seven, but many do not know that arson is the eighth part one offense. Uh, these are the most serious offenses, and every year, of course, we aim to drive these numbers down even further. Our stats in part one or violent crimes, crimes against the person, uh, you'll see, is uh, down slightly over 2011 and down uh, remarkably versus 2010. Uh, and 2009 for that matter and subsequent years. We've uh, really done a much better job in the last few years of trying to drive down the crimes against persons here in Missouri City. It's something that we focused on and uh, judging by what we're seeing in the decline, we hope to keep that going even further. Um, you'll notice in other categories like uh, robberies and rapes in particular, we've had only slight decreases, I should say in just uh, <coughs> robbery in and of itself. So again, we're seeing progress, we're seeing incremental progress, but it uh, takes the efforts of all the police officers and uh, police members of the police administrative staff that I have here today, uh, and a cohesive effort to make sure these numbers are declining. Our crimes against property, our crimes against property are perhaps our most frequent crimes that we have. Uh, they include burglaries, criminal mischiefs. Uh, uh, I should take away, criminal mischiefs are not part of part one crimes. Criminal mischiefs will not be part one, they would be part two. However, our part one crimes include burglaries and the, uh, the different thefts and other uh, portions of the part one crimes that are against property that are delineated down on the bottom of this slide. What you'll notice is that against other years, uh, we've done remarkably well in this category. Uh, we've, we've worked very hard uh, because the citizens of Missouri City have partnered with us to drive these numbers down by listening to our crime prevention uh, message, by participating in it, uh, by coming to their HOA meetings, HOA meetings and hearing what we have to say and integrating what we say into uh, what we do as an organization and to help us drive numbers down by being more proactive themselves. So a great deal of this uh, progress is due to the fact that the community has stepped up and really taken the crime prevention effort on, head on, and helped us uh, reduce our numbers. Crimes against persons, again, these are just better graphs that actually give you, you know, a, an idea of what type of uh, impact we've had on these numbers. It's been up and down for a couple years, but, but you'll see in, in this slide in particular, uh, murder, which is key, is a number that, we, thank God, we've been able to keep down over the last two years at least, and uh, we aim to keep that number down as much as we can. Our part one crimes, just a better look at a pie chart on uh, crimes in a nutshell for the last few years. Uh, 2010 being the most rocky time we've had in my tenure here, but 2012 uh, becoming more stable. 2012 being one of which we've, uh, we've experienced a, a decrease in sorts and citywide part one crimes are down and I think most of the neighbors that go to each, each one of these HOA meetings would confirm that for us. This graph, uh, albeit uh, I think people in the audience may have a little trouble seeing, uh, but if you look, you'll see the things that are highlighted in green are, are really numbers that you may want to concentrate on. And that's, uh, I'll go from right to left into the bottom portion. You'll see 969. The 969 number represents uh, our total part one crimes. And you'll see in 2012, 969 versus the year prior of 1,219. Uh, a remarkable uh, decrease in that area. And uh, again, the thanks go to the men and women of the department, the people in the community that are, are looking out, making phone calls, giving us an idea of who's causing problems in, in, in any individual neighborhood and actually helping us, uh, you know, conclude a lot of our investigations. Every year I talk about family violence. These are some of the assaults that we see that, uh, you know, we, we don't really have a lot of control over what goes on in people's homes. However, um, in the very last meeting, uh, we were able to establish contact with the, uh, with the women that were helping, uh, you know, battered women in here in Fort Bend County. And it just gave us another resource, another, uh, you know, means by which we could give uh, a woman or man even information if they're in a situation that is potentially 
uh, going to lead to family violence or have a, you know, or they have experienced family violence. Uh, family violence is something, again, that, uh, you know, we've uh, really focused on. We've uh, had our victim's assistance officer and detectives uh, follow up on many of these uh, family violence calls, even those that did not necessitate an arrest. Uh, if we receive a call and we, and we believe that that family violence call is something that has the propensity to recur or get worse, what we'll do is we'll have our, uh, our detective or the, the um, victim's liaison get in touch with them to try to establish a means by which people will know how to get out of uh, relationships and p potential uh, combustuous situations that might lead to a family violence offense. Accidents by year and by beat. Our accidents are, are somewhat down this year. Uh, we still are experiencing problems in certain areas. Our Beat David area in particular is probably our, our, our busiest, obviously, in having Highway 6 run through our Beat David. Uh, that's still an area of concern for us. And it's one of the things that we'd like to do. Uh, it's attack it differently. And by attacking it differently, uh, we are hoping that the, uh, the motorcycles that we've proposed will be something that uh, can drive those numbers down. We want to aim to correct bad driving behaviors and reduce the number of collisions we have in the city. And, uh, you know, it's great to have great crime numbers, but accidents and mobility are key. And there are things that people care about very much uh, when they have to come to work and go, come home from work every day. So we want to keep the mobility uh, angle going in the city. And by doing so and reducing the number of accidents, we can. Our total larceny, we look at larceny or thefts, shopliftings for the layperson. Uh, and two, we look at it really two ways. Uh, we look at thefts that happen in any neighborhood within Missouri City, but we also like to break it down per box store. Uh, we've experienced uh, a great deal of time and effort and response to, to uh, arrests that happen inside of a box store, box stores being your larger uh, establishments that we have in the city. Um, they don't make up a huge percentage of the total thefts that happen in the city, but just by working with the box stores on uh, programs that we do now, uh, some of which are uh, getting the anti-shoplifting information out, moving our shell cars out into areas or to lots to which, these, uh, to which we've experienced more crime in any one particular box store. Um, there, there are things that we're doing to help mitigate possible crimes in these areas, but what we like to do is, is target the uh, particular stores that we see the most activity in. And albeit, again, I'll have to reinforce that, that that activity is not that great. However, if we're able to reduce these things in any one particular store, then we can move on to the next and perhaps drive all the numbers down. Uh, citywide UCR crimes, um, family violence makes up 61% of all of our part run crimes in the city. Uh, again, that's a, uh, that's a huge issue. You know, you're looking at our 2011 numbers at 61%, but last year I spoke to you about this and talked about some of the things that we were trying to do to drive that number down, and I spoke about it again tonight. But you'll notice the arrow to the far right indicates that it only makes up 40% of all of our part one crime this year. So we have had a uh, specific impact upon the amount and rate of family violence that we have in the city. Our citywide UCR part two crimes. Part two crimes are sometimes called lesser crimes. I uh, call crimes crimes. So uh, albeit we're down in part two crimes, we'd like to be further down. <laughs> we'd like to uh, decrease those numbers as much as we would our part one crimes. Um, if we can drive the numbers down across the board, uh, it makes for a better way of life and a you know, more livable situation here in Missouri City. This is just a, this slide is a synopsis of the total of part one and part two crimes and what our total percentage is being down. If you combine those numbers you know, over the course of two years, you're, you're looking at the huge, huge changes and huge declines. Um, again, the men and women in the department are the ones whose backs are, we're working on going out there and making this thing possible and making us uh, a livable and uh, a potentially uh, vibrant uh, city, even more vibrant than we already are. When people see these type of things, uh, they see the positives that happen in the city and it makes them want to reinvest here. And I'm hoping that, you know, by decreasing crime, we're doing our part to make this one of the best cities that it can possibly be. 
Um, in 2012, we got a lot accomplished. Uh, our city and our police department had uh, undergone problems, as you know in council, with uh, retaining our telecommunications officers. One of our new telecommunications officers was honored tonight along with Samantha, you know, in reference to that 911 call. Um, this is one that we hired after council uh, made, it, made it easier for us to hire by adjusting some of the uh, pay scales of telecommunications officers. Uh, we have achieved our, our full complement as of next Monday for our telecommunications officers and with the next, well, with the test we just gave on Saturday, we hope to achieve 100% again in staffing with the PD. Uh, we ran Northwestern University School of Police Staff and Command. As you know, that's a nationally accredited program, a very highly respected program, and I think that as we become uh, more and more of a leader in law enforcement in the Houston area, then uh, we'll also uh, be recognized as a, a leader in training and development of our officers, and I think that's very important for the pride of the officers. You know, the pride of the officers is one thing. However, the, uh, the city, what it brings back in return, it can be exponential, and we're, exp we're able to uh, uh, expose you know, some of these national programs to the joy of actually hosting something here in Missouri City, and that's very important. Our command strategies have been to, uh, to work in development of our supervisors and our employees. So we've brought in speakers like Kevin Johnson on the last slide to talk about ethics and other trainings that have uh, helped shape the men and women that work in this department and uh, that hopefully make you very happy. Our chaplain program, uh, our first chaplain, Dr. Charles Murphy, has uh, officiated a lot of our programs and has been a tremendous help, especially in the areas of some of our violent crimes and our family violence. Uh, he's responded to these incidents. Heck, he's even responded to problems we've had where an officer may have uh, needed to speak to a chaplain or had made use of him or their families have made use of them. So. Uh, it's not just uh, relegated to the police department. He's worked within the fire department, and he does it gratis. Uh, we're, we're hoping to expand that program to involve other chaplains. We had a heck of a lot of them come out that were interested in uh, being a part of the program, and we're hoping to, to bolster our numbers there and take a little bit off, off his back. Um, we've made strides uh, with trying to reduce the amount of paperwork we generate. Uh, we've transitioned to OS OSSI. We did so in November of this year, going up live with the help of, uh, I was looking for Bill, but uh, IT. Uh, IT was uh, crucial in making sure that this was a seamless process for us. And I think uh, you'll see the related benefits of us having a more efficient system using OSSI as our uh, software package. Um, this is another one of the training sessions that we've held. Uh, we had uh, officers from around the Houston metropolitan area come in for uh, Penn State University. The mayor and myself have been uh, talking to Penn State University in reference to addressing uh, a national forum, a plenary forum of uh, law enforcement administrators. Uh, they're interested in how we're doing, what we're doing here in Missouri City, how we're working together as a police department and as a city government and uh, how that happens so well. And uh, we hope that by doing more of these type of national level trainings, by bringing in people from various backgrounds and a diverse number of people that we're able to, uh, to really put ourselves on the map and actually expand our offerings to the, uh, to the Houston area, not, not so much just the Houston area, but our officers themselves and their own personal and professional development. You'll notice here that uh, our block training concept is mentioned. What we do with block training is compress all of the mandatory training that officers need to have within a week. Uh, so I'm not saying every officer would get their training within, a, within the same week. What happens is we would take a, a shift of officers, put them through the same classes that they would have to have uh, in, the one week's, in one week's time and have another shift substitute for them and the, ben the benefit of this is that we're not sending people all over the Houston metropolitan area to have them trained. We're training them here in Missouri City, we're training them in a condensed period of time, and we're getting them back out on the street. As you see, Officer Tracy Cox told us 100% of our department is CPR certified. I'm glad he reminded me of this. Uh, we're the only police department around that's 100% CPR certified. And we provide our officers with the lateral mask. Uh, so every officer has one, as do uh, most of our personnel in 
the, uh, the dispatch center. Um, I choose to follow the rules. has been a tremendous boon for Missouri City. Uh, we've been able to host uh, kids from various uh, elementary schools in the entire Fort Bend County School District, the schools that, that actually lie in Missouri City, and we've touched greater than 1,500 students. Uh, I can tell you that we aspire year to year, and I'll say uh, Mr. Emery uh, pressed us last year to, to, to be really, really aggressive about how many kids we touched. And we did hit that 1,500 mark, and we plan on hitting, I want to say 1,700 uh, is what we targeted for next year. So we're, uh, we're meeting those kids at between third and fifth grade, trying to touch them early and often and change the way they view law enforcement, but better yet, uh, get them in tune with how to stay out of problems and how to stay out of trouble and to know that police are just a resource for them and not a, a entity of, for them to be afraid of. Uh, the consequences program is to reinforce to some of the older kids, again, some of the things we have to, we have to avoid as growing adults, some of the things that could potentially harm you uh, if you're looking to go get accepted into a college. Uh, again, another important program and one that our city manager actually got behind very early on uh, when he started here. So uh, it's, it, we, we've been teaching the consequences program now in conjunction with the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Department. And I, again, it's been successful for us and we'll aim to touch more kids this year with that program as well. Police Department is up again for recognition uh, certification this year. Uh, but we maintained our status last year. We will be reaccredited this year. So you'll find that we'll be working very hard to meet all of the rigorous uh, tenets that they ask us to meet to maintain our recognition. Uh, we exceed some of their recommendations in many areas. So uh, I put a lot more pressure on the, uh, the uh, rest of the police department to exceed these standards. And I, I don't foresee there being a problem obtaining re-recognition. Uh, our dispatch center, I talked about how well they've been doing and, and we saw that tonight. But one of the things about dispatch that has really facilitated the change is adding that third supervisor. We have three shifts, we only had two supervisors in there. That didn't make sense. Uh, we approached the city manager and the city manager was gracious enough to make sure we had 24 hour oversight. That has made a huge difference in the service delivery in the uh, dispatch center. Our systems common channel, another no-brainer for us was to go up so that if something happened in Sugarland, Stafford, or anywhere else, immediately each agency would hear what's going on. Our uh, dispatch, our support services captain, uh, Robert Gernt from uh, Systems Administration, they got the channel up and running. And now each one of those uh, agencies from around us use the same frequency to transmit when a priority assignment comes out. So if there's a shooting, a robbery, a rape, anything that comes over the system's common channel and everyone hears it at once. You'll see we put building cooperation and collaboration on Texas Parkway. Uh, never in a million years would I have thought that we've, we would have had the positive response that we've had with the mini station. I, I knew it was something that needed to happen. However, the uh, tremendous positive feedback that I've gotten from having a mini station out there is really uh, overwhelming and it's something that we all should be very proud of because I know that uh, not only did city management but city council had a lot to do with that project taking off and uh, I think we're reaping the benefits now. And although we've only had it open a half year, uh, some of the declines we've seen, I, I believe, is attributed to getting better uh, feedback from the community uh, information being received, calls being made to 911. Um, those are the things that most police departments would shy away from, but we want those calls because the more information we get, the more we know how to direct our personnel, and that's very important. We have an open, open and honest relationship with the citizens here, and it's just uh, made for tremendous leaps in uh, information sharing. Uh, you'll see something to the right. I, uh, so it's, the graph's pretty small, but that number, and the, uh, the scale on the far right-hand side is just showing you the number of calls that the many stations handled. That's since we began capturing the calls that we've, uh, we've got at the many stations. So I believe that number is 145. Uh, that number pales in the comparison to the number of people that we actually had come in the many station and ask for information or just come in, sit down, and have a cup of coffee with officers in there. We have Fort Bend County Sheriff's Department officers in there. As you see, we have <laughs> tons of cars from the Fort Bend County over there, not so many from the Missouri City Police Department because we just, you know, we can't, we can't do the same thing, obviously, that Fort Bend does over there, but we're happy to have the presence there. 
and the president says something about the positive relationship, not only th that we have with the community, but the positive relationship that, uh, that we have with Fort Bend County. And again, uh, Councilman Smith, that's, that was in your area as well, and I thank you for the support you had out there because, uh, again, council and, and, and everyone with the city that had something to do with that project, thank you. And, I, and Bob, Councilman Marshall, the same thing with you. Uh, you, know, you guys got, got behind us there, and that really made a, a difference there. And I, and I get that feedback from the members of the community when I stop in and I talk to them and they're happy that that uh, many stations there. Our CID remodel was another highlight. Uh, we were pressed for space for uh, CID and we remodeled the old dispatch area to uh, accommodate the, uh, the added detectives that we have there. Most of you uh, don't know, we also uh, offer a co-location with some of the people from SEU or some of our federal partners at times. So we really needed the space over there and we had to uh, make room or make do, I should say, with uh, some of the area that we had f that was left over when we moved the old dispatch area from uh, the location where the new CID is over to the EOC. So um, it's all centralized now. All the detectives are in one area and each one of their supervisors are co-located there as well. Uh, municipal court and co-band and uh, our partnerships there, we've, uh, we've worked with Municipal Court doing several warrant roundups and uh, work with them to try to facilitate the, uh, the service of uh, warrants that are in the city. Uh, we could do a better job there and we're trying to work with uh, Municipal Court and we've heard the uh, city management, we've heard council and we realize that again, um, there are things that we can do in, and I know this isn't on the slide, but we need to, uh, to make sure that we do what we can to, to serve as many warrants as we can to, to clean up you know, some of the things that we've had problems with as far as uh, warrant management in the city. Uh, Coban Technologies helped us get a lot of our information together. Uh, the interview rooms facilitated a reaccreditation of our uh, juvenile, uh, our juvenile uh, interview rooms. Uh, that's key because you, we would not be able to f facilitate doing those interviews in our own facility had we not passed that process. So that was done. And uh, again, uh, it, a lot of cooperation went in by enhancing our relationship between municipal courts and the police department. Our National Police Week function every year seems to be growing. Uh, we're able to get more and more people out there each year. It's in the uh, third week of May and we're hoping that the citizens that are here today and that hear this, uh, this message um, decide to come on out and support Police Week. Um, it's uh, to honor the fallen officers around the country and in particular here in Texas. And uh, what we do is, uh, is sometimes labeled as a moving ceremony. I, I just feel like it's uh, something or a time to give back to those who have fallen to, to uh, support uh, policing and to, you know, the, the people that have been selfless. It, it's important that, uh, that people come out and at least understand what the uh, what the message is about and it's hard to recite the message now without going into a long diatribe but as you see by the pictures uh, the ceremony is uh, as described it is moving and people uh, have appreciated it coming out of that ceremony mary you always have some very poignant words to <coughs> say at that uh, ceremony and i'm hoping that more of the people that are uh, that visit city council and are interested in what goes on in the city decide to uh, take part in that our National Night Out, uh, as you know, National Night Out has been done in two locations in the city. It's done in Fort, it's actually done out on Highway 6 in front of Target, but we also have it, had expanded it down to the mini station area over on uh, Texas Parkway across the street. So uh, we've had a tremendous amount of uh, positive feedback from both locations. Uh, the Texas Parkway location is growing more and more each year, and uh, this year I have something special planned that I can't divulge now, but. Uh, I think the Texas Parkway uh, version of National Night Out will, will be just as grand and just as large as our run and target on Highway 6. Our Stuff to Squad Car charitable event every year has uh, expanded more and more. Uh, we have never failed to hit our target mark on how many police cars we want to fill out there. And uh, we, this year our biggest donor was Classic Chevrolet. And uh, I can tell you that each year it grows more and more and uh, the charity 
from the uh, people that live here in Missouri City uh, can't go understated. I can tell you that each year we exceed the number of police cars we attempt to stuff. Uh, some more highlights I'll briefly uh, cut through. You'll see some of the uh, promotions that we've done. Uh, that was something that hadn't been done till 2009. We hadn't had promotional ceremonies in the city and that, quite frankly that's something that, uh, that needed to start happening. Uh, our award ceremonies, another thing, uh, right around the time of police week, actually a week before, we'll have an awards and promotional ceremony. And uh, again, another time that we can give back to those that serve the city selflessly. Uh, some of the other highlights, uh, Lieutenant Burleson graduated from the FBI National Academy. Uh, a huge uh, part of that was that he was the first person in uh, Missouri City to ever win the blue brick for swimming. A lot of times you hear about them winning, a getting the yellow brick for doing the yellow brick road, but the blue brick indicated that he swam for 34 miles, which is a tremendous accomplishment. Lieutenant Merritt uh, finished modules one and two of Bill Blackwood Institute. We've had uh, Myself, I, my, I went to uh, Harvard and uh, finished their senior executives and state and local government program. We've had Assistant Chief Jemison also graduate from Northwestern and uh, senior management and policing. So we're investing a lot and making sure that the people that are running the police department here uh, have a really global perspective on what's going on nationally and trying to integrate some of those national standards here that help us uh, function more efficiently and uh, hopefully yeah, you see it in the form of uh, better service. Uh, Sergeant Broussard is another person who we've sent to some ex executive development programs and uh, he wrote a very poignant thank you to us for, for sending him. Uh, I think you'll find that, you know, we've had supervisors respond to a few scenes lately and I've gotten calls uh, just praising and extolling the, the uh, interactions that they've had <coughs> with members of the community. Our grant awards, I won't go through all of them, but they're substantial. Uh, we've really made a, a you know, we've really put a uh, emphasis upon seeking out uh, grant monies that are applicable to what we're trying to do here in Missouri City and what we're trying to accomplish. And uh, as you see with the numbers that are uh, spattered about there, we've uh, done a very good job of offsetting some of the costs that we would have to push on to uh, budgetary line items uh, and trying to make sure that uh, we can go out and seek the money that's out there. And the mayor, I, I know you've been instrumental as well in trying to work with DOJ and, and getting us some of these awards, so thank you as well. Our uh, CPR and AEDs, I talked about all of our persons being uh, trained in uh, CPR. However, we've got AEDs around the building with the help of the fire department. That was a, uh, a big coup for us. 84% uh, of our officers are either, either intermediate level peace officers or eligible for higher rankings. That's key because many agencies have people that have basic certifications and don't reinvest in the officers. We do. And having uh, such a high complement of officers that are eligible, eligible for higher certifications is a, is a big boon to the uh, citizen of Missouri City. Uh, the training hours, you can read that. That's, uh, we dedicate a lot of training hours. However, a lot of the training hours that I talked about earlier are condensed within that block training. A couple more numbers just breaking down how the younger officers or the new hires make up the officers that have those lowest percents of basic officer training. So as soon as they're eligible, we move on to get those, we move on to get those people trained. Our vision, moving on, trying to uh, get the traffic unit up and running. Uh, looking at a regional crime lab, we talked about uh, some DNA uh, investigative abilities. We're also going to try to expand our use of IPs to uh, reduce the number of burglaries we have in the city. Uh, we talked about training facilities uh, and meetings we've had over the last few weeks and uh, a police headquarters. That's something that's on our wish list in the future. Community outreach doesn't stop at just the police and fire, but the police and fire auxiliary, I should say, doesn't stop at HOAs, but the police and fire auxiliary have been key. We encourage people to get into the police and fire academy and learn about what we do each day. Home and building inspections, every officer we're gonna have taught to certify for home inspections. That doesn't work uh, 
for every insurance company. However, what's good is if an officer comes in, there's the potential that there could be a reduction in your homeowner's policy if an officer uh, does the homeowner's inspection. You know about our drug program. We've been tremendously successful with that in 2012, and we hope to get a, a new drug box over in the mini station to double our efforts. 70 pounds of pills, 56 in 2012, and 14 <coughs> pounds, so close to 15 pounds in 2013 so far. And our commitment, again, to the HOA program and our interactive nature with the residents is something that we can't say enough about. I said in the beginning, and I'll close on this note, uh, without our interactive nature, without the, uh, the exchanges we have with the uh, homeowners associations, we wouldn't be able to drive the crimes down. We wouldn't be able to, uh, to move in the directions that we move in uh, with a lot of our programs. So thank you for all your support and uh, thank you to the citizens of Missouri City because they deserve the real uh, pat on the back for uh, moving us along and my officers as well because without them, you wouldn't have me up here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. That's a great report. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, yes, ma'am. One. Maybe Scott can help us, but have, have the medians cut down on our accidents? And when you were talking about accidents, have, I mean, everybody complained about them, but the whole purpose of the medians along Highway 6 was to reduce that traffic accident number that the chief alluded to. We have seen an antidotal uh, decrease in accidents, talking to police officers on the street. Uh, they have seen a reduction number of accidents, both on Texas Parkway and on Highway 6. Uh, we're really are waiting on a six-month uh, after installation and do a more formal study on that. Okay. And the other one is more of a comment, Chief, than anything else, and I've said this before. I, I think a lot of our statistics are not homegrown. A lot of our statistics come from the large city next door to us, and I just want to compliment our officers uh, for doing what they're doing to lock those guys up, because as I've said before, you come to Missouri City and do a crime, you're going to do the time. I agree, man. Uh, and, and I just hate that it, you know, it, it looks like we've got, you know, the numbers that we do in Missouri City, but I think it's important for our citizens to know, yeah, we've got, we've got our own crime, but a lot of our crime is not homegrown. And, and if they saw the same emails that, that we see from those guys that are getting put in jail every day and, and our officers are putting them, they're not Missouri City addresses. Uh, and I just want to compliment our guys for, uh, you know, doing what other cities should be doing to keep the crimes out of their city because hopefully the word's going to get out. If you come out here, you're going to go to jail. Uh, they do a heck of a job, Mayor, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, along with what the mayor said, I think compliments to the whole department for everything you, you, you all do, especially with the HOA programs and all that. I just wanted to just, there's two questions that comes up all the time for me is one is the, um, the UCR reporting versus some other type of reporting that yes. we have. Can you explain that a little bit? In the past, we had, uh, when I first got here, we were using IBR, incident-based reporting. Incident-based reporting counts uh, every, every particular crime that happens, period. Uh, and it breaks it down uh, one by one and not an ongoing event. So the best way to, uh, to give you an example would be uh, the robbery example I give probably every year, and that's, uh, you know, if a guy goes into a bank and he holds up the bank and he, in essence, robs the bank, that would be one, counted as one robbery under UCR. Under IBR, if the person's in the bank, if he took money from everybody inside the bank, he would get one robbery for at each one of those numbers. Yeah. The problem with that is uh, uh, when being compared to other cities, uh, we were compared with cities that did not use IBR uh, type of ranking. So uh, when in trying to explain that to some of the people that were covering it, uh, they were improperly measuring us against cities that did not use the same type of reporting system, which led to problems. So we decided to go with the uh, okay, UCR. Just to, just to follow up on it, so is our neighboring city using the UCR? Yes, they do. So they are. Yes, so sir. So we were also, so we switched to, to be more on the uniform side? Correct. That's what it was. Okay, following up, part two was, you know, as Mayor talked about on Highway 6, the uh, medians, you know, reduction in accidents. And that was one of my questions too, but I think you answered it. The other thing is text driving. 
Have we gotten any type of numbers or is there any data out there that shows that how many that we regulated or, or because I, as again, as a comment, I see a lot of people swerving back and forth, mm -hmm. especially in the morning and in the afternoon. Uh, and you can clearly tell when you come up to the, to the left or right side of them, you know that that's what they're doing. Oh, it's funny. It's funny. So I was just curious. The, other day. Yeah, the, the mayor asks that all the time. I, I don't have the numbers handy for it. I can tell you that we have issued tickets for it. Uh, you know, it is a reason why an officer is able to, to, to get a car pulled over and to, to begin an investigation. Uh, texting is something that we're serious about. Uh, there are more and more cities across the country. Heck, more, you know, commercials you're seeing on a national level that just address texting and driving. And Again, it, it may not be popular, it may not be something that, that people want to talk about, but the bottom line is it reduces accidents if, if we have that enforcement initiative in place. And uh, how many times we get to use it is something that, that gets brought up all the time, but uh, I believe that just by having something like this in place here, uh, it says a lot about our city and a lot about our city council that we're willing to be one of the few in the great state of Texas to, uh, to stand up and have that you know, deterrent there. And as you see, when you drive up and down Highway 6, you'll see the, the you know, we have on the, uh, the digital boards, you know, uh, you know, don't text and drive and how many deaths there are this year and, and tech, you know, related to accidents on highways. So if we can mitigate it just by one, isn't that enough to, to have that still in place? I'd say so. We've got to convince the governor not to veto the bill. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but Chief, I guess uh, I'll kind of echo what uh, both Robin and, and the mayor said, and that's the HOA program. When I go to HOA meetings, the, the one thing that, that folks really uh, are appreciative of is our officers being there, giving us the crime statistics for their area, answering their questions, telling them what's available out there. So, you know, I think that's something that, uh, that we can be proud of, and I know that uh, we're going to, you know, continue to uh, to strengthen that uh, alliance with the HOAs because, you know, they're the eyes and ears of our neighborhoods, and uh, they're the ones that can really help us. Well, I, I appreciate that. And not to get too far ahead of you, but you know, we just talked a few weeks ago, and I, and I was on top of actually having one of the crime analysts walk uh, a couple through how to use ATAC raids and how to track what's going on in their neighborhoods. And without the message being out there, they wouldn't know to ask for that. And that's why it's been so important and such a useful tool for us. Transparency has been a boon for Missouri City in general here. I would just like to say that um, whether you realize it or not, I think the level of service that you all provided has created an expectation of what our citizens want. And that's the measure that we have to continue to uphold. You all do such a good job that you all are putting pressure on us. And we appreciate that. Hey, the pressure doesn't stop at you. <laughs> yeah. I think you did put some pressure on Russell back here to do a, do an annual report like this. <laughs> Those guys on that back row, you know, they they need to be patted on the back too. But uh, Russell may need to do one of these. Paige, you know, may have to help him with this. Huh? <laughs> Actually, you're working on that. That a girl. I I, I got it. I bet it is. <laughs> I got to say this though. Uh, the city manager has already been on us about uh, about working to get maybe a, a, a citywide uh, annual report together yeah. that sort of mirrors nice. that. So public safety nice. period. Because yeah. mm -hmm. these guys, I mean, as I said before, Chief, they, you know, both of our police department, fire department, done an outstanding job. All of us up here. We don't get complimented what we do, but we get complimented what yeah, you two agencies do, and that's what it's about, really. Good. Thank you. Great report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's going to make the comprehensive plan look boring. <laughs> Who's got it? Oh. Yeah. Mr. Gary. Oh, good, the PowerPoint's here. Just listening to the chief, and Mr. Lee's joining me because the Planning and Zoning Commission is who's charged with delivering the report to you, but as I thought through it, 
it's as exciting because you can see how we are achieving the goals as the council, as the city, as the community that are set forth in the comprehensive plan. Chapter 6 of the comprehensive plan charges the Planning and Zoning Commission with the responsibility of giving you a progress report. The report relates to significant actions and accomplishments, obstacles or problems in implementation, proposed amendments or recommended actions, programs and procedures. That's from the comprehensive plan. If a chance when you get through with this, you'll see we're talking mainly about the accomplishments that we've seen. Staff assists the, the commission in preparation of this. The staff work group on this report included Stacy Walker, Sharon Valiant, Valerie Marvin, Jennifer Thomas, and Larry Foos. Now if I can figure out how to work this. Good. Comprehensive plan. You know what it is. It's the framework that guides our future development and the redevelopment of the city. It's the vision the citizens and this council put together for what Missouri City is to be. It sets forth realistic and achievable goals and strategies. The land development regulations, the engineering standards that are employed when people come in for development and redevelopment ensure that the form, the character, and the quality of development that are reflected in the comprehensive plan are carried forward. The elements of the comprehensive plan, there are five, land use and community character, growth capacity, parks and recreation, mobility, and, and the final element is implementation. Under the first element, there are five goals, Cover the first three first. The first one is a more cohesive city. Second one, moving beyond the bedroom community perception. And the third is increasing focus on neighborhood integrity and commercial redevelopment. I think the two major factors we have seen in Missouri City on our cohesive city, city center and the recreation and tennis center where the city came together to have those happen. To further connect our city and make it more cohesive, we're participating in a bicycle and pedestrian path study through HGAC. We're also doing it at a staff level to extend that study into the neighborhoods. Another example of it is the Oyster Creek Trail, which now extends from Sugarland into Mo all the way to Mosley Park on 1092. Moving beyond the bedroom community, we have Lakeview Business Park, which, if Bob has told me correctly and my memory's any good, there are basically two lots left out there. The rest are spoken for or under development. Also, the development we have seen along South Gessner and Cravens Road. Uh, in the photo is what we always call Cookie Baker or Twin Star Bakery, uh, a fabulous building with an incredible opportunity for growth. We also have the proposed industrial and commercial development that was recently approved in a planned development district along the Fort Bend Toll Road between Lake Olympia Parkway and Trammell Fresno Road. Our uh, increasing and ongoing focus on neighborhood integrity and commercial redevelopment, two factors I'll cite. One is the emphasis that this council insists that we give through code enforcement. The other are the, the plans that are in the beginning stages for redevelopment, putting forth concrete plans, redeveloping Texas Parkway, ways to have it happen. And you've heard presentation already about 90A and the development in that area. The last two goals in this element public and private development and design practices that encourage resource conservation and protection and quality design and community appearance. The first photo is at Benny Keith and it's not the best one but it's the one I could get where they buried the hollow black plastic boxes so they could harvest rainwater and recycle it and use it in their operations to conserve their water consumption. Uh, we also, on top of our 
uh, adopting a water conservation plan and industrial waste ordinance to, to protect our, our resources. We also are providing for low impact development. Uh, the Millis Tract was one of the first to use it. We will allow other people to use low impact development if they do it according to standards and we've chosen to parallel the standards that uh, Harris County Flood Control is using. Quality design and community, I went too fast, quality design and community appearance. This is a photograph from Siena, but you can see our new sign ordinance, our architectural standards that we have had in place, and our code enforcement emphasis. And the way we use those as development comes along, you can see the impact and the quality and the appearance we have in Missouri City. And growth capacity, providing for basic utility services, orderly growth of the community so that our infrastructure and public service capacities support that growth, development patterns and targeted growth areas consistent with our service capacities. Our surface water treatment plant is maybe the jewel and the crown of our utility work. That is the crowning achievement of the groundwater reduction plan and that group. I don't know of any other place that could put that many governmental entities together and get them to cooperate and get positive results mm -hmm. and not have it just quit working. It's worked. It continues to work. It's something that was uniquely Missouri City and something Missouri City should be very proud of. Also, we're seeing consolidation of the uh, Mustang Bayou service area, improvements in our wastewater treatment plants and uh, joint efforts in wastewater treatment plants so that our utilities are taken care of. We see the continued development as we desire it, as you see Riverstone to continue to develop as Siena continues to develop according to the plans that were set forth in the past to meet the quality that is desired. Perhaps the most fun one that I could spend a great deal of time on, parks and recreation. Quality of life and develop parklands at a rate recognized by statewide as a standard of excellence. We have a program that's been recognized at the state level in the Edible Arbor Trail. In the local area, our Junior Arborist Program has been recognized. Community Roots Program, the Right Tree Trail, the Buffalo Run Prairie Restoration Project, Memorial Tree Program, Stamo Re uh, Reforestation Project, and Three for Trees Program. Park and Leisure Facilities that offer a wide range of passive and active recreational opportunities. I have half a page listed here. Pavilions, athletic fields, the recreation and tennis center, the trail system, improvements at Buffalo Run Park at, at Hunter's Glen Park, the uh, spray park at Hunter's Glen, which is a cooperative activity, uh, improvements over at the Freedom Tree Park. Throughout the community, the park system has been improved and it provides those facilities and activities. Special events that offer activities for people. And those special events that, that pop to mind first are tree lighting ceremony and the Snowfest Parade, Dad and Daughter Dance, Egg Palooza, the 4th of July fireworks and carnival. We offer a wide range of activities, recreational programs and classes for citizens of all ages. And we have a trail system. I've mentioned the Oyster Creek Trail. Uh, the inter internal trail system at Independence Park, the trail system at McNaughton Park, a variety of other trails, and again, the Edible Arbor Trail, not to leave it out or to forget, to forget it at all. Our system enhances the aesthetics throughout uh, the not only park system, but throughout the city by maintaining the flower beds and the shrub beds in our parks and on all city property. They oversee the mowing contracts for the parks and the medians and rights of ways. And perhaps a little known fact, between 2008 and 2012, 1,641 trees were planted in Missouri City through the efforts of our Parks Department and the folks that have cooperated with them. Ultimately, the goal is within each park to have a zone for active recreation and for passive recreation. 
and the goal is to have it split 50-50. A new master uh, parks plan is being developed. Mobility, I left out the medians, y'all talked about the medians. We want a regional transportation network, a system of arterial and collector roadways that provide connectivity within the city, mobility system that offers a variety of choice, modes of travel, and roadways that accommodate all users. The intelligent transportation system, you have a photograph of, of their control center. Uh, it moves traffic through the community much better. We have a traffic management plan, a thoroughfare plan. The Metro Park and Ride location at Fort Bend Town Center and the connectivity. Remember, Fort Bend Parkway is under construction to Siena Parkway. The frontage roads will continue to Siena Ranch Road. They're on the way. They will be completed, I wish I remembered the date, in the near future. Siena Ranch, <coughs> excuse me, Siena Ranch Road will be completed and Siena Springs will be completed so that they interconnect and take traffic over to LJ Parkway. LJ Parkway will connect with University that is now complete and will give us a back, what I refer to as a back access or another way where you can swing around, avoid Highway 6 and wind up almost at the Brazos River Bridge on Highway 59. Interconnectivity that will help that area. We have seen reconstruction uh, rehabilitation of roadways, South Gessner, Turtle Creek, Quail Valley East, Valley Forest, the Lake Olympia Bridge, and we, the other photograph is the realigned intersection of Thompson Ferry Road that improved <coughs> safety at that intersection where it now aligns with Paradise River where it meets Oilfield Road. We are trying to provide a variety of choices in modes of, trans of travel bicycle and pedestrian trails with those path studies we've talked about. Continued efforts to bring com uh, commuter rail to Missouri City. The Oyster Creek Trail and the other trails within uh, Missouri City and the sidewalks that were constructed along Texas Parkway all offer options and for mobility. And to accommodate all users of the system, we are now employing the complete streets strategy where there's an opportunity where we're intending to use it on Gregory so that it is usable by vehicles, safely usable by bicycles and pedestrians so they can mix together and be comfortable being side by side. Your thoroughfare plan update has implemented nearly 40% of the improvements designated as short term in the 2011 update of that plan, making headway and getting that done. Obstacles or problems. The work group noted that perhaps our biggest challenge is, is the availability of raw water that will challenge us in fully implementing the groundwater reduction plan. In looking ahead, the comprehensive plan requires a five-year review that's next year. In the next fiscal year, we will have that review and we will report the results to you. If you have any questions, if Mr. Lee has any comments. <laughs> I just have one comment. Uh, well, actually there's two. Uh, where will we put the golf course in this plan, in this report? It, it, it is it number one? It's, it's actually in the detailed report. I didn't put it in the highlights because it began and our work on it primarily preceded the comprehensive plan, but it's integral in what we have done. I would put it in cohesive community. It and also fits in recreation. And I, I just, I mean, that is such a major achievement not to have been mentioned. I mean, I'm, and maybe I'm biased. The other thing is, is that on the transportation of mobility, Fort Bend uh, transportation runs a bus service in Missouri City. So we ought to be looking at what other agencies that provide services that support us. 
including those in our, we, we mentioned met, Metro, and that's kind of natural because we're part of Metro, but we need to look at what else is being provided that support the comprehensive plan. And, and, and those buses are all over Missouri City all day. They, in fact, they drop off out in front of City Hall a couple of times a day. That, that is also in the detailed report that as when I was trying to condense it, I edited that out. But indeed they are, matter of fact, I was over at the municipal court today, saw one of the, the vehicles parked in the parking lot over there. They're everywhere and they provide services that otherwise are not available as a mode of transportation. And it also, is it possible that we can have Fort Bend transportation at least come and tell us what they do so we can get an understanding of what they do and particularly before school is out maybe it may be some services that can provide some our young people to get around the city we can bring them in to do uh, some type of presentation i mean yeah. it's one where we're also looking at kind of our annual you know i want to develop an annual metro presentation to you as well that'll probably be in the fall for metro right. um, well, well fort bend buses are already on our streets there's, okay, that was a big controversy about metro buses being on our street. Yeah. But all right, I'm suggesting them because they're already operating in the city. Even though we have been aware of each uh, individual project, but it's very nice that you put the whole uh, big picture together. And, and it feels good that as you go along and present it to us, and I also think this is equally important is to create um, uh, to bring this new to, to the stakeholders that who are really matter, you know, like the, the business communities, uh, developers, investors, so they know all of the positive changes in our city. So I guess the question for Ed is that, I mean, how are we doing on that? How, what, what, what is well, one of the big things we do is the state of the city address. Uh, so it's one to where that's where we highlight, you know, many of the things you see here, but even getting into greater detail aimed at the business community about what it is, that how, where's Missouri City going and what are the things we've achieved. <coughs> so the annual State of the City address hits these things very much so. Um, does that help answer your question? Or yeah, you city, else state of the city address is important, but um, we're talking in much broader. Right now, when people type in Missouri City on the internet, I mean, I mean, we don't have a lot of negative, uh, we don't have a lot of positives. So do you have a plan that, that, that you know, when they type in Missouri City, all of this positive information will pop up, you know? You know, people check and yeah, you see, you know, you understand what I'm saying, man? We're looking at an economic development website. It, as far as actually changing what you get when you get on Google, I don't know, I, I don't know what you'd get right now if you did a Google search on Missouri City, you know, what, what all information pops up. Um, I know our website's something we often try to point people to both the current city one as well as future ones. The, I, was, you know, I, was, I think that could be part of the uh, communication and marketing too, you know, where they do that. I know what you're talking about when you Google, things pop up. Gary, I was excited when I uh, saw that this was on the agenda because I was real curious as to what would be put on here. I noticed that um, under the land use and uh, community uh, 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 area number one, the more co cohesive city, out of the nine items that you have here, five of them are geared towards the, uh, the, uh, the major projects, as uh, my councilman spoke of, is that's, the, that's the city center and the, uh, and the tennis center. And uh, those are certainly noteworthy. They, that should be something said about that positively. But I also go down to item number C, and it says an ongoing increasing focus on neighborhood integrity and commercial redevelopment as the community continues to mature. And we got one line item. One line item. One line item that says continue to emphasize, put emphasis on code enforcement activity. Is that all we got? We have one of the ma major concerns here. This has been a... Uh, and this is not directed at you. But this has been an item that I can recall back to 2005, but that we got certain areas of this city here. And there have been harsh terms used as underserved, just totally overlooked, two Missouri cities. And then we give our comprehensive plan, we have 
One line item. One line item. I think we should direct more attention to this, especially now that we got this bond referendum that's coming up in the future, and perhaps a tax increase. We, we intend to uh, continue our efforts to work toward redevelopment. But let me say this and, and cut you off. I'm not expecting you to answer this. This is not directed. I think it was just appropriate for, for this to be said right now. Gary. Well, I think it should also be appropriate to say that that uh, this report is a pretty good uh, synopsis of all the things that have been going on in the city. And our comprehensive plan was developed in 2009, and uh, you know, it really had some lofty goals. And uh, um, this is, you know, kind of addressed to the people who say that we never get anything done here. Uh, well. This is, uh, no, I'm not talking about you, Don. I'm just saying in general, people say we, we don't get anything done. There's, there's a heck of a lot here that, that, that we get accomplished here. And, uh, and I think everyone should be commended for the work that the uh, hard work that the employees of the city do. Uh, to, I was actually going to compliment you. I was going to say that the, the brain thrust that we have behind this podium here, I recall when we decided that we were going to take a hard look at what was going on over in Quail Valley, I, my recollection, it took us about 45 days to get mobilized, to get something done. That's the kind of brain thrust. It's kind of the, the zeal that I know that this council is capable of doing. But yet, mm -hmm. but yet we've been dealing with this Texas Parkway and Cartwright Corridor that I can recall as far back as 2005. What, uh, what, what, now that this has been presented to us, what happens with this report? Where, where does it go from here? So for here, there's, there was just a presentation of the report right. is what's required. And it's one where we'll do this on an annual basis of presentation of, of the report from the PNZ to the council. There's nothing else for y'all to do on this right now. This is, this is what's required by the charter. I understand, but we're not going to pretty it up something like this here. Is, is it going to be available to people that want a copy to know what? We most definitely can put it together in some type of nice format to use um, okay. in and order to be able to, to publicize it. It's really probably something we'd more likely include with some of our other newsletters or emails out um, in relation to these items. Well, and, 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 but I think some parts of this conversation needs to be uh, added to this plan. I hope you took some notes. And, and, and again, I'm not criticizing, but you know, we spent $17.5 million. And then didn't talk very much about that $17 million that was spent, you know, in the quality of life issues of promoting. And we've taken a lot of heat over that. And I would like to see it highlighted in this plan. Uh, uh, so if it does go out to people, they will see that it's a part of the planning process of the city. I mean, we didn't just do that by osmosis. You know, we spent some time, kind of like what Don said, to develop these things. And so, I mean, when you do something like, it's kind of like a taking credit plan. We need to get all the credit that we do in the plan. Yeah, and, and I'd like to echo what Jerry's saying and Don's saying. I think that we take a lot of criticism for what we did with both the tennis center and the rec center. A lot of money spent, you know, here and there. And, and then they look at the bottom line of that facility and that's the only way they measure it. It isn't the only way to measure it. And at some point in time, we need to come back to this council with some reports that, and Susan's sitting back there, she knows about, we've seen a tremendous increase in property values. Okay, in the last year, based on what we've done as a city. And that's what I measure the bottom line by. It, you can't necessarily measure the bottom line by that facility itself. We're gonna see that in a long-term plan in that property values, houses are selling, and Susan can tell you, houses are selling much quicker today than they ever were. And the price per square foot is higher than they were a year ago and much higher than it were two years and three years ago. 
that's going to that's going to continue to be revenue for the city that's not over here in the balance sheet of either one of those facilities but yet it's the same pair of pants it's a different pocket and i think all the criticism that we take needs to be offset sometime with some of those things that the positive things that we've seen we talk about the commercial growth and we've heard people come to us and say we moved our business to missouri city because we think this is a place we are, where our employees want to be, the property values, the education level, the, you know, the income level and everything is there. That's, I think, just what we're saying. That's part of our comprehensive plan is all of this stuff that we're doing, all of this revenue that we give up in tax increments and, and the TERS. A lot of times the citizens don't understand that we have to give up a little bit to get something for the future and and I think we're at a point in time where some of those are beginning to reap true benefits that we need to brag a little bit about we don't need to be sitting here saying that we're crime ridden and gang ridden and all that stuff and sit back and take it well, I, I think guess, we need to stand up and defend ourselves but I guess mayor what I was trying to point out is that uh, well, we do get criticism for uh, our uh, seventeen and a half million dollars that we spent on those facilities, and and we've all said everything about that. But this report is great in that giving examples of everything else that this city is sure. doing. Uh, I, I think this is outstanding that uh, what the employees of this city and the, and the city council. And I don't have think done. we have seen the long-term benefits to what Don's referring to, both in the Lakeview Business Park and the Gaston Road Commerce Park, those are going to bring okay. uh -huh. that development and that redevelopment of Cartwright <laughs> and Texas Parkway. We're going to start seeing here shortly when those, when those big units get up and their 300 and 500 employees start coming to work every day, they're going to start looking for restaurants to eat in. And they're going to start looking for nice things to see. And they're going to want them to be close to where they are. I think Texas Parkway and I think Cartwright Road are fixing to explode. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see what we've been talking about could happen for years. Yeah, I've, been, and Don and I've been talking about that snowball effect for years and it's going to happen, it's gonna happen gonna, because the, um, see the buildings are there and now we just got to get them open and get the employees you got to get some people that are interested in putting some money in some town center type facilities and some things that bring some retail in here to make it make it grow danny knows that he's seen it i did it i did it yeah exactly when, when you um, address the, the re redevelopment of when PMZ looked at this, did y'all look at uh, uh, rezoning to different uses as a part of the company's plan? Versus saying, we're going to try to keep it retail. It, when retail may no longer be applicable, it may be something different that. We intend to address that as we go through our redevelopment. Okay. review for it. We have uh, the studies in hand. Now we have to put those studies into action. And I'm, I'm looking but, but for time to get those plans brought forward so that we bring a viable, achievable plan together that gives us the result that our community wants. Gary, we have a we have a study in in hand that that gives us an idea as the best use for the, the for the different properties we have zoned. We, if I recall, the study primarily addresses vacant properties. We want to tie that in with the existing built properties to get the best result. Um, I'll pick on on the uh, movie center movie theater center it exists there the study that we have doesn't talk about that center because it existed it talks about the vacant tracks primarily adjacent to city hall the the track up at cartwright and and texas parkway but we need to tie it all together so that when we get those results that we're looking for on the vacant tracks 
the occupied tracks will bring us the businesses we want for the community. What we study is that? Be careful on how we allow referring uses to, within those. You're referring areas. to the George Johnson study, which okay. even yeah. even the principals who were involved in that says needs to be updated because it's no longer practical. What with what was originally imagined. At the next work session, we're planning to have a discussion with the council in relation to a study that we want to do. Um, this isn't as far as what's the best use of it. It's to look at who is it that's along Texas Parkway, who are the customers that we should be serving, essentially to pull together information that we can then take to the retailers, the developers, to start talking about active redevelopment of some of these centers, yep, like Gary's about talking Aaron. about, as well as. That's, that's part of it done, mm -hmm. but the, the part that I was talking about is, is, is that if somebody pick up the comprehensive plan that they see some flexibility that the old movie theaters may just totally go away and something totally new may go there, mm -hmm. okay, versus just focusing on, re, you know, I mean, 2234 may not support the amount of retail that's allocated, it may, you know, and, and I'm not saying it doesn't, but the flexibility there to have some new uses might be something the plan ought to reflect that we are open to. And the other thing, Ed, I think this was just a report, uh, right? Yeah, that is exactly what it is. It's a report of the accomplishments. So, what has been done in order to, as to in order to meet the comprehensive plan that the council has previously adopted? So, as some comments that was made here about the uh, you know tennis and rec center as well as the golf course, can we add that? The tennis and rec center is actually included in here. Um, I believe it is, I know it's under what, section two? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's in the report itself. As the city center is as well. Well, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more candid about it. You know, the, the tennis and yeah. rec center falls on the parks. Wait a minute, say that. I'm sorry, what did you say? Tennis, rec center, and golf are part of parks. Okay. And that's, the, that's what I was trying to say earlier. That distinction is not being made in here. It's like, it's separate. Yeah. You know? Now, the other thing I think, you know, for future comprehensive plans, I think at, you know, probably would be a great idea to have some type of a workshop with, you know, plant, you know, PNZ and, and us looking at the next, you know, where we're going to be from five or ten years from now. Well, that gets you into, yeah, the revision of the comp plan. So you have the comp plan that you set out and approved 2009? 2000, 2009, wasn't it? 2009. And so the five-year update for that is coming up in 2014. So in 2014, you'll do this exercise again in regards to updating as well as maybe even changing with council and PNZ and more than likely, I, mean, I don't know how many citizens you involved, but I assume it was probably pretty extensive um, no, at that level again. Yes. Advisory committee? Is that what oh, y'all called it? Plan? Yes. Uh, yeah, we had about 30 people on there. Yeah. 30, so you'll go through that exercise again in 2014. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank Can you. I say one thing, please? Yeah. Yes, please say something, Don. In my years of being on the Planning and Zoning Commission, it's been easy for me to understand that the things that the city council has supported has really been to the great benefit of this community. This report up to this date is pretty comprehensive. Gary, you did a good job of delivering this. When I came here 17 years ago, we had 35,000 people here in Missouri City. Today we got 70,000 people. We didn't get to that point because people had not been doing their jobs. All of the people, everybody that's worked with this thing. Missouri City has got a great group of people. We're going to go further in the future. Why? Because the technology is there and the tools are there and the people are there to make it work. And I'm just uh, very happy and pleased to have been a part of just a little bit of seeing what has gone on. And I hope you all let me stay on the Planning and Zoning Commission for years to come. Again, Gary, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Gary. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Final report, but they're good reports.
Item 6 is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as printed? So moved. Second. Councilman Marshall made the motion. Councilman Wynn made the second. All those in favor? Motion carries. Item 7 are public hearings and related actions. 7A are zoning public hearings. 7A1. An ordinance of the City of Missouri City, Texas, amending PD Plan Development District Number 74, describing the 12.04 acre tract of land within PD Plan Development District Number 74, referencing a site plan for such PD Plan Development District, providing for certain construction according to said plan, amending the zoning district map of the City of Missouri City, as adopted by Ordinance Number 0811, adopted on January 19, 1981, as amended, providing for repeal, providing a penalty, providing for severability, and containing other provisions relating to the subject. There a motion. Who made it? Uh, uh, second. Mayor Pro Tem White made a motion. Councilman Emery made the second. Is there a discussion? Not a vote. All those in favor? Motion carries. We like it. Look, we like it looking alike. No, I mean it's it's very simple. It's going to look like the other building, exactly. which it needs to be. So, yeah, seven A two. An ordinance of the City of Missouri City, Texas, amending Section 8 PD Plan Development District of Appendix A of the Missouri City Code, entitled the City of Missouri City Zoning Ordinance, amending rules and regulations pertaining to the establishment and amendment of plan development districts, providing for appeal, pro providing a penalty, and providing for severability. And this is the first of two readings. Second. Uh, Caroline, I had asked you earlier today, uh, why can't we restrict early on and say like for the first 15 years and um, uh, to address that question as as council is aware the current ordinance does provide for both uh, unified ownership that means 100 percent of the owners uh, submitting the application uh, for both the original application and for the amendment recent case law has uh, uh, instructed us that uh, in certain circumstances, this is uh, not a correct thing to do because in the event that there is not unified ownership, that does, uh, in effect, cause council to delegate their authority to a private owner. Uh, that was established in the Law from Terra case um, uh, in 2010. And uh, in certain, certain circumstances, if uh, there are multiple owners and one owner will not agree to the application, it will prevent the application from coming to council. So these amendments do allow for an opportunity if there is a disagreement or uh, not 100% of the owners submitting the application, a process to still have that presented to council. So if a person so initially somebody come in with a large track and wanted PD. And what you're saying is they sell off the tracks individually. Then those individuals then do not need the permission of the original holder of the PD. Uh, there's a mechanism to get that before council. Uh, uh, certainly it would be probably preferable for all entities within that PD to present a unified amendment to council. But in the event that they do not, the revisions in this ordinance provide that an application still, can still be submitted. The other property owners are notified of that. Uh, they're given the opportunity to protest that. If they do not protest, they are deemed to have waived any objections to it. However, if they do protest that, it will still before, come before uh, the PMZ and before council uh, so that council does not inappropriately delegate that legislative authority to the holdout property owner. So they can protest under the 200 square foot rule, square, I mean square foot rule. This is, this is a different mechanism. This is a, a special notification to the actual property owners within the PD. Uh, so they will have uh, detailed information about what the application for the amendment does entail. If, if I may cite an example uh, to bring real life to your question, Plantation Trails has a commercial reserve on 1092, but it has how many homes within the PD? If somebody wants to develop the commercial reserve in a way that's even slightly different than the PD provides, right now they have to get every homeowner in Plantation Trails to agree to the change. The change, and I failed to include it in in the cover memo, the applicant on an amended 
plan development request may only request a change as to that applicant's property, not anybody else within the PD. PD-8 in Siena has been divided into multiple ownerships also, and it, it may pose a problem. It, it's a concept that we think will ease in redevelopment, and that's why we brought it forward. So, and then the other side to that is, it really isn't an issue if they're not asking for, uh, unless they're asking for something different than the PD, or something different in the PD. If, if there's a change in the, if there's a difference in signage. Okay. As we have used that uh, variances for signage through the PD process, and to have that change would require all people right now would require everybody to join in and agree to it. Any other comments? <clears throat> right, we'll vote. There was a motion by Mayor Pro Tem White, second by Councilman Wynn. All those in favor? Motion carries. Item B, no public hearings. Item A, there are no appointments. Item 9, authorizations. Item 9A is to consider authorizing the acceptance of land from Santa Plantation Municipal Utility District Number 1 for the surface water treatment plant. Mayor, this item, staff wishes for this item to be pulled as they're still continuing negotiations on this item. Okay. All right. Then 9B is consider approving the request to record the 1020 year tax write-off summary. Moved to the <laughs> you tell it's getting late, Wes, huh? Mayor Pro Tem White made the motion. Was it Councilman Smith that made the Mayor second? Smith made the motion. I second. All right. <laughs> Either way, all those in favor? Motion carried. Item 10, there are no ordinances. Item 11, a resolution. 11A. A resolution of the City Council of City, Missouri City, Texas, granting consent to First Colony Municipal District Number 9 to annex certain land situated within the corporate limits of the City of Missouri City, Texas. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. What's the value of that? Who seconded? I did. Fine. What, what's your question, Don? Is that what's the value of that? Uh, the land that we're going to allow them to annex. The appraised value? Yeah. Is we I'm not aware of the appraised value. Is it significant? But it, it has no it has no value to the city other than if it goes into the district. Now the district can service it. If somebody has the land that's trying to develop it and it is within the city, ultimately I guess we could end up getting some tax money from it once it develops. Be, but apparently it can't develop because it has no service because it's not in a municipal utility district. Yeah. Yeah. To actually correct that, this one is, in, is a unique circumstance. It is uh, actually located in a municipal utility district. Another municipal utility district is willing to expend the cost. This one, this one is very different. You've seen a circumstance like this before. Uh, the two utility districts have uh, 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 agreed to uh, for the this new utility district to uh, collect the money and to um, provide those services via an interlocal agreement. This is unusually typical. Both utility districts have long agreed as, to long it. As long as the city of Missouri City can benefit in the end. Uh, yeah. It doesn't make any difference. They can get double taxation essentially from the lines. I don't think so. It would be staff's recommendation to uh, adopt this resolution okay. uh, for the provision of utilities to this tract. Councilman Marshall mm -hmm. made a motion. Mayor Pro Tem White made a second. All those in favor? Motion carries. Item 12, City Council announcements. Uh, um, any announcements? Uh, I'd like to thank those of you who responded to my mother-in-law's uh, unexpected death. I appreciate the compliments. And our, at least the comments and such, and mm -hmm. being with our family for the last two weeks. So, thank you for that. Uh, let's see. 
I did I well announced at the meeting in April for the Fort Bend Mayor and Council to be in Stafford, and it will be the Fort Bend Emergency Service. And thank we let's just keep reminding people we we have our day in Austin. May 2nd. May 2nd. And at some point in time, I assume we're going to have something where yeah. people can go online and sign up to attend so we know how many buses. Well, yeah, we got a 47 passenger bus, I believe it is. A 47. So, yes. And if there's but, more people want, I guess, but yeah, first come, first okay. serve on this one. Um, and we'll probably later this week actually start getting some stuff out to those who we want to make sure are kind of some of our invited guests to, to get them on board. And Stacy and I are working with the Skeeters still for May 3rd uh, as Missouri City Night uh, with the Skeeters. And uh, we'll be getting details out about that because, again, we're going we're gonna to want a big crowd there. And what we're working out with them is some of our commercial partners doing some sponsor things like caps and th you know different deals i know uh, benny keith has a suite i think republic has offered a suite that night uh you know for our use but you know we're going to be selling tickets to that and i think didn't he say like 12 bucks or something like it's going to be the price of the ticket stacy and that will or some and it's a reduced price and the, they're going to contribute back to our uh, police program, I dare to follow the rules. Uh, that's where the proceeds of that uh, charity will go. So we'll get all of our 1,200 kids or so that are involved in that program out selling mom and daddy a ticket to come see them. <laughs> we, we worked out with them uh, for $5 for the tickets. So we're going to work with our commercial sponsors to underwrite those tickets so that we can give them for free to a lot what of What a students. deal, huh? Yeah. But we want to fill that stadium that night with Missouri City people. And Republic is giving us their suite. Huh? We'll have 20 tickets in Republic suite. Yes. And um, we're working with some local organizations to present that night. And I'm actually going to Constellation Field tomorrow because Kyle is going to present at May 3rd. It's uh, Missouri City night at the Skeeters game at the Constellation Field. It's the day after we go to Austin and back. So. Huh? All right. We'll reconvene and. That's what it's